We've got barbecue back here. You're all invited. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? Doing pretty well, Jared. How are you doing today? Uh, you know, I just, I'm still, I'm still, still working on whatever. I don't, I don't think I'm sick, sick. I don't know if I ate something. I've just been, I've been very low energy. Um, but you know, I'm, I'm here. I'm here. So I guess no complaints. I mean, some complaints, some complaints, but not a lot of complaints. It was really good barbecue last time. What barbecue? What are you talking about, gangland? What on earth are you talking about? Well, maybe we'll have some complaints here. It is the Ask Sloopcast episode here. You ask, we answer. If you want to ask us a question, hit us up on the Discord. Discord Discord.thesloopcast.com. Become a uh, join join our Discord there. Uh, be active, get promoted, and you'll have privilege to ask us a question, and we will answer. Or just on the pay next the episode. three, or just pay the three dollars to the Patreon, <laughs> yep. or, or, uh, you can always send us a text or a voicemail. Kyle, we have a new voicemail line. We have a new phone number. People can send us text. Or voicemails uh, to our Google Voice number, which is dangerous. I acknowledge. Let me play one for you. Um, I don't. The recording's gonna get this audio. I don't know if you will, so I might have to translate it. All right. By the way, the phone number. I should probably give out the phone number. Nine three seven seven five six six seven. Eight five, which if I remember correctly, actually kind of spells something, but I forget what that is. <laughs> um, I I forget. I'm I'm just gonna say I forget. I think it kind of spells something, and I and I already messed something up. Okay, back over to here. What? No, I didn't. I told you nine three seven. <laughs> It's 937. Okay, I'm going to play this. Long-time listener. Long-time what? sleep cat. Duck land here. Okay, he says, long-time listener. Long-time sleep cat. Duck land here. Jared, what say you to those who think Kyle McCord won't even play or start a year at Ohio State? Also, fuck you. Okay. He long time his, listener. His question here is... Uh, what do I say about people who think that Kyle McCord uh, won't play or start at Ohio State ever? And I'd say you're wrong. He also he also said fuck you at the end, which I I feel like was a tad aggressive. Just a tad bit. A tad bit aggressive. Uh, Kyle McCord will start next year. Um, Kyle McCord technically started last year. So you're just wrong. Got to give it some vigor. Yeah, Gangland, whoever Duckland is, he really came with some vigor there. We have to find Gangland. I'm putting you in charge of finding out who Duckland is. Because I have no idea who that was. I definitely don't recognize their voice uh, from any of our social screens over the over the years. Um, so but I'm going to put you on that case. OK. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Jared. Let's but Tom McCord started yeah. in 2021. Um, yeah. he's not going to transfer at this point. If you were afraid Kyle McCord was going to transfer the, that window is closed. He's in it for, he's in it for 2022 now, or excuse me, 2023 now. And also he's the number two quarterback on the 2022 team. Uh, and I quite frankly think he will rival if not top a lot of Haskins single year records that he did in a single year at Ohio state. I think Kyle, I think also think CJ Stroud is going to break a bunch of those records, but you know what I mean? Like a one single season quarterback at Ohio State. You know, right now the golden mark is Dwayne Haskins. And I think Kyle McCord will rival that single season as a as a Buckeye. Yep. All right, Jared, let's get into some questions here. You heard uh, people saying Devin Brown will start next year. No. No, no. Not no, not at all. Um Quite frankly, um, and I, and like, I want, 
like I want all these quarterbacks to have success. They they can't all start for Ohio State. To me, it's much, much, much more likely that McCord, if one of those two players never starts another game at Ohio State, I would put my money on Devin Brown. That's what I'd put my money on. Considering who Ohio State has coming in the recruiting pipeline, um, considering Kyle McCord, who at this point we're assuming will only play one year. <laughs> but that's just like an assumption I'm making. He might play two. Um, so between McCord and Brown, I'd say it's much, much, much more likely that if only one of them ever starts a game at Ohio State, that it's McCord and not Brown. Um, and like I said, look look further down the pipeline into the, you know, 2024 recruiting class as far as who I think the next, next starter at Ohio State is. Yeah. All right, Jared. You ready for some questions? Yeah. We already right, did one. Better. Yep. Well, some more questions. Okay. <laughs> All right. When does fall camp start for the Buckeyes? Uh, what? Like uh, five so weeks before the season? If we go, hit, yeah. If we go historically, um, so from my from our understanding, the week zero teams, yeah, uh, they start their first camp next week, the yes. week of the twenty fifth, and Ohio State typically start usually has like a Thursday Friday um, to start their camp. So if you move that ahead of a week, that would put us probably about August 4th and 5th. No, nothing's official yet, but if we're if we are if we're going to give a good good guess here based on previous years, I'm going to say August 4th and August 5th will be your first two fall camp um, days. That's yes, I agree. All right. Uh, is not a rival still and always just a year away? Penn State? No. They're not a year away. Not this year. No. No, they weren't a year away last year either. Um, I don't know. Uh, I, I think Penn State might be in a bit of a conundrum, whereas Franklin is good enough not to get fired, but not good enough to get them to the next level. Isn't there something recently that somebody, that somebody posted in our chat recently about Penn state? I'm sure probably there's a lot of things posted in our discord, Kyle, uh, and Penn state's one of going to be one of the better teams in the big 10 this year. But, um, there were some major yep. investments. So Yes, so, a federal investigation. Yeah, so it says here, from, um, Penn State is in the midst of another scandal after there were group sex videos pictures taken inside the locker room. Okay, well, we're going to go ahead and wait for additional details on that and not speculate on any of it. Nope, we're going to go on to the next we're, question. Then. We're moving forward. That's a type of thing that I will let the law handle and not speculate on. Yeah. Uh, when will we make it out of the wasteland? Um, Someone was blackmailing players with those. Yes. yes. From inside the locker room. Okay. We're again. We're, we're going to move on. Uh, Nomad wants to know, when will we make it out of the wasteland? Uh, August 4th <laughs> or August 5th? Yeah. Uh yeah, it's it's about the it's about the time that they uh the media lines up and starts taking pictures outside of a hotel on campus. That's 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 yeah. about this is, that's this is that's good. that's like that's where the wasteland hits peak wasteland and then dies. <laughs> yeah. This is a good one. Slightly Are off you... campus, excuse me, gangland. Why do sports commentators keep referring to college athletes as kids instead of young adults? 
quite frankly, because they're treated as children. I mean, the, they aren't living the same lives as an average college <laughs> student. Yep. Uh, it's their days are regimented. Their, their days are scheduled. Um, yeah, it's, I, I think this is why they can sometimes be targets for like, you know, shit like what might be happening at Penn State right now. Um, what happened with Ohio State and the massage therapist, that whole situation last offseason. Um, I, I think that they are in a lot of ways, not always, but sort of treated like children and again for and i'm not saying this is a good thing or a bad thing and it's not a judgment for or against the players by any means because there are good parts to this and there are bad parts to this but in in many ways they aren't living what is typically a young adult lifestyle and, you know, now that they're getting money, will that change? Maybe. That, you know, that might change that. And by the way, it's also less true at places that, you know, like Ohio State in many ways. I wouldn't even say it's less true. I would say it's differently true. It's differently true. Because, um, like, here in Columbus, Columbus is a big boy city. It's not a little campus town. Like, some of these places are little campus towns. Where the players are, you know, oh, oh, the Columbus police force is not going to look the other way on shit because of kids from Ohio State. They just aren't. It's it's a big city police force. I don't and I'm not saying that does happen in Tuscaloosa. But again, you're talking about a little campus, little, a little. Yeah, you know what I'm trying to say. A little campus town versus like a big city, you know, it's. But the point is, is that they don't have like the same level of just like off to college to live in a dorm room, independence, get an apartment off campus, do what they want to do, start becoming an adult like lifestyle the way that, like I said, standard students do. Mm -hmm. Do you think athletes will hire their own personal trainers for the Woody? Um, I don't know if you could. Could you take your own personal trainer into the Woody? Is that a thing you could even do? I, I that's a yeah, general question. I, I don't know. Um, I, I would think you wouldn't be able to do that just because of, I don't know. I, I feel like there would be a lot of things that could go wrong if you bring in yeah. somebody who's not employed by Ohio State to come in and use their facility. Yeah, I, I think that that opens up a lot of issues just through like, even just through security. Yeah. I mean, as far as like both player safety, but also information, I mean, we saw what can happen when a player gets uh, bought off by a pair of assholes and how that can uh, affect the game footage at practice. Yeah. And so it's just like you don't want outside forces involved as much mm -hmm. as you can. You, you don't want anyone walking into that building who isn't specifically employed or credentialed by Ohio State. Mm -hmm. Should Ohio State have taken, taken a bull ban for that 2011 season? Yeah, the self-imposed or the non should they have self-imposed the non self-imposed should they have self-imposed in order to, um, we would have beaten Notre Dame in the national championship game. I think hindsight's 2020, of course. Um, I also don't know that I'm the people at Ohio state genuinely were surprised by the bull ban. I'll say that. Should they have self-imposed? In hindsight, absolutely. It's very, 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 very easy to say that in hindsight. Um, 
Don't say Bama would have gone. They lost a game. I I don't know. Come on, don't don't even act like this shit's been fair. Recently, Bama was clearly the best team that year. They might have. Bama was clearly the best team that year. Notre Dame couldn't hang with them. Ohio State wouldn't have hung with them. See, see, here's here's one thing that I get I get tired of hearing these past number of years of oh the the best team should should um get the benefit of the doubt the best team should go to the playoffs the best team this and that you know sometimes the best team doesn't win and right. I, and I think if you and if you and I think if you play a good schedule you play good teams you beat those teams did that, Ohio that, State that play says, a good schedule that year. I they did. I'm gonna say no. I'm gonna say no. It wasn't bad. Yeah, it was. Yeah, it was. Best team in the Big Ten that year was what, Wisconsin? Um Ohio State ends up winning that game. Um they I I did they play like a shitty Cal team out of conference that year? Um, yep. so, so their out of conference games was Miami of Ohio, yeah, UCF, uh huh, Cal, Cal, it was Cal, and UAB. Yeah, that's that's sad. The Big Ten was overall pretty sad that year. Uh, as Z Spike says, they struggled in a lot of it. The, there was not. I listen. They went undefeated. That's an amazing achievement. It really, mm-hmm. really is. Uh, in 2012, that is. But that 2011 team, the 2011 team wasn't any good. That 2012 team, it's not that good. They had the benefit of a shit schedule to go undefeated. They would have been rolled hard by Alabama that year. Let's let's not let's not be silly. Ohio State would have been rolled by Bama. Absolutely rolled by Bama that year. Um, Notre Dame couldn't stick with Bama just through pure athleticism. And if you're going to look at me with a straight face and say Ohio State was significantly more athletic than Notre Dame that year, they weren't. Maybe in their freshman, they went in their freshman. They were, they had some amazing freshmen on that team, but um, not enough of them, (laughs) quite frankly, like, yeah, it, it, they're, they weren't going to touch Bama that year. Um, could they have beaten Notre Dame? Probably. Because I don't think it was all that great of a Notre Dame game either. Uh, Notre Dame team either. But So maybe. But I think we look at that Ohio State team and see that unbeaten record. And I, and I think there's a lot of... Uh, I think there's a lot of rosy... Rosy glasses taking place about how good that team was. Um, there's a lot of a lot of rosy perception taking place there. Mm-hmm. They would have fought for Urban. Great. That that's that's fantastic. They would have fought. Period. It's not it's not a matter of having fight or not. Uh, I mean, sometimes it is, but not with that team. Like they they would have. I don't know it. They they don't touch Bama that year. They yeah. they needed more talent, which they did not have yet, which they would have uh, two years later to take on Bama, and they just didn't have that talent yet. Yep. And Joey Bosa was not on the <laughs> team yet. Von Bell was not on the team yet. Those guys weren't there yet. Yeah. This, they this they they that, showed up in twenty thirteen. That was this Urban's was first like true recruiting class was 2013. Yeah. And he got was, um, he got influence on the 2012 class. He got some guys to come in late on the 2012 class. But his first full recruiting class wasn't until the 2013 kids came in. And they went on to become like Ohio's Ohio State's third version of the super sophomores and win a national title. Which by the way is one of the reasons why I'm so optimistic for this upcoming year. Ohio State has some super fucking sophomores coming. Yeah. Uh, would Cardale have been a Heisman winner under Coach Day? Uh, 
Um, I don't know. I mean, the the god honest, guess, the god guess honest guess truth of it is, is that Cardell Jones doesn't. It depends on like how, how. Are we talking about like Day as a coordinator? Um, I don't know. I just I I in my opinion. If we're talking like if Cardell Jones was on the roster as a junior last year, as a sophomore last year, I don't even know if he starts. Ohio State's just bringing in a higher level of talent at quarterback right now. Ryan Day brings in a higher level of talent than Cardell Jones. Um, that's 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 just the. Uh, that's the truth of it. Uh, yeah. The the if we're talking about true passer, we're talking about a true passer. Things changed under Haskins. We all love Braxton Miller, but Braxton Miller was a run first college quarterback. If we're talking about a true thrower of the football, everything changed under Haskins. Um, yeah. It, the bar was forever set higher, and it has not come down since. You would say that's a good take. Thank you. <laughs> so speaking of setting the bar high, Jared, Darren Lee. Is Darren Lee the most consequential linebacker Ohio State has ever had? I like the word conse consequential there. Um, consequential. Kind of was that. So yeah, if, if Lee was in this modern version of the defense, I think he would potentially be the um, bullet or whatever we're calling the bullet now, the bandit or whatever. Um, he was awesome in that national title run. Absolutely, he was. Absolutely, he was. And, and he'll for, he'll forever have that image of of the touchdown against against Michigan in the end zone with his arms up. Funny thing is, when I think of Lee, I think of him. Uh, talking shit to what's his face on the Alabama sideline. Why can't I think of his name? The dude who looks like Tosh Oh, come on. Someone help me out here. Lane Kiffin. Lane Kiffin. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that to me was just him suddenly walking by Kiffin talking shit. And to my knowledge, he's not yet revealed what he said to Kiffin. <laughs> Maybe he shouldn't. Uh, yeah, the uh, mod, with, but with no, modern, I, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not done with the. I don't. I don't think we've answered the question. Um, did he sort of set a modern standard for linebacking at Ohio State? I think is is that what is being asked? If he, if we're talking about if you most consequential linebacker at Ohio State, um. I kind of want to lean towards Shazier. If we're talking about like that next mold of linebacker at Ohio State, I kind of want to lean more towards Shazier. Now, if we're talking consequential, and if consequential includes was an important piece on the way to a national title, if that falls under the banner, the, the category of consequential, then yeah, I think so. Um... He might be. He wasn't the only linebacker on that team, though. I think that's also worth noting. Um, there were some excellent linebackers on that team. But he he definitely felt like next mold linebacker. Um, but, you know, I don't think he was, like I said, I don't think he was the first Ohio State linebacker to essentially be like the modern, like, would have been playing safety in a different era linebackers at Ohio State. Um for, for whatever reason, the name Brian Roll comes to mind. I feel like Brian Roll was one of the first linebackers at Ohio State who you looked at him and said, should he be playing safety? He was a dude. Brian, Brian Roll's not talked about enough. Brian Roll is not talked about enough. He was excellent at Ohio State. He had a pretty good career in the NFL. For I, I want to say he had a somewhat lengthy career in the NFL. Brian Roll is not talked about enough at Ohio State. Mm-hmm. And again, he, I think 
in my mind, and like if someone wants to say, no, 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 you should actually maybe talk about. You see, because like you think about like, I feel like the, there's a there's a line and it happened after like. Carpenter and Hawk and. Um, I, want, I almost said Schleister, which is obviously wrong. Um, Schlegel. Uh, yep. And then at some point, they, I feel like they were sort of the last of the traditional linebackers at Ohio's. Laurinaitis. See, mm-hmm. Laurinaitis still feels, he feels like a transitional guy. Maybe. What about, what about he was part Hawk? traditional big linebacker and part um, modern faster linebacker. But I think I almost lean him more towards the traditional big linebacker. The name Brian Roll is, I can't get past Brian Roll if we're talking like the first new era linebacker at Ohio State. And again, I might be forgetting someone. There might be a better answer to that question. Um, But I'm going with Brian Roll for now, just sort of doing it off the top of my head. Okay. What do you think, Kyle? I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking back of that the early mid 2000s. I mean, AJ Hawk is one of the first ones to come to my mind. Lauren Idis is another two. I, I would say, but again, Hawk was like, Hawk feels more like the old school nineties linebacker than he does like the 2020 linebacker. If that makes sense. Yeah. I, uh, <laughs> With modern PA systems, do cheerleaders serve a game purpose? No, but, you know, tradition is tradition. Mm-hmm. Laurinaitis, are you saying Laurinaitis did a lot of modern stuff in the pros or Hawk? Hawk? Yeah. I mean, he obviously, yeah, I mean, obviously, right? He was incredibly talented. He could do a lot of things. I'm just, I don't know. I'm talking more from a body build standpoint. I feel like if AJ Hawk was coming out of high school right now, he'd be playing defensive end, not linebacker. And I feel like if, if, if Darren Lee had come out of high school at the same time as AJ Hawk, he'd have been playing strong safety. That that to me is sort of the that to me is sort of the dividing line, right? In what era would they be playing what position? Defense just got smaller and faster. You know, we've talked about this a, a hundred times. The the strong safeties became well, the safeties became linebackers, the, the the cover two corners became safeties, the safeties became linebackers, the linebackers became defensive ends the defensive ends became like three tech defensive tackles and the nose tackles are still nose tackles. Cause we need mass down front. All right. Uh, last question we have here from nomad. Should the team wear black or white socks with the traditional home uniforms? My first instinct white. is to say white. Yeah. That's that's it. That that's I guess that's my thought. Um, can 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 they not get some gray ones to match the pants? Ooh, there you go. Listen, I I know I just was like, oh no, because cheerleaders because of tradition. Hear me out. <laughs> I I I kind of want Ohio State to always wear red pants at home. Mm, no. No. I love that red on red look against Penn State last year. Um, and qu- and I, I want them to wear white pants on the road. And that one, I don't feel like anyone should. You want to say, no, 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 Jared. I don't like the all red uniforms. I don't like that. OK, you know what? We can we can agree to disagree on that one. Wearing white pants on the road. Get Get on the bus or get off the fucking bus. Like, I'm going to die on that hill. White pants on the road are fire. Absolutely they are. And it's not even that big of a change, but I think it's a change that makes all the difference in the world. Because the gray's not that dark. That silver pant that they wear is not even that dark. 
So it's not even like a radical change, but I think it's a change that makes all of the difference. Mm -hmm. It looks so much cleaner, Gangland. Here's what I'm thinking. On the road, traditional helmet. Everything about the helmet's still traditional. Got a white jersey. I'm putting those gray sleeves back on. I'm I'm yes, get tradition unlike any other. On. Kyle and I bitching about the gray sleeves. You put the gray sleeves back on. What clean, traditional, don't change anything about the white jersey. White pants, white socks, red shoes, gray sleeves. As gray long sleeves. as it has gray sleeves. Gray sleeves. Red <laughs> shoes. We uh, Gangland says we have to stick with either black or white shoes. Red shoes. The only red on the uniform essentially is like the 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 trim on the helmet and the shoes. I think that's a fire look. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think that'd be good. I can see it. But I'm willing to compromise as long as I get white on white. I want those white pants so bad. I want those white pants on the road so bad. I what, want them. Did, I want them almost as much like as I snow? want the old school gray, the old school gray stripes on the, on the, on the, what, on the What jerseys. did they call that? Um, that look? Was it like, well, the fans call it the cocaine whites. I'm pretty yeah. sure the university doesn't call it that. <laughs> <laughs> the wolf? No, that the wolf is when they did the grays, right? Yes, the wolf is when they did the grays. Yes. And Penn State was being all pissy about it because they said it was too much like they're they're all whites. They're like, it's they too blind? similar. Are they Shut colorblind? Up. Penn State. Are they colorblind? Maybe. Okay. All of their games, they everyone wears white all the time, so it's possible. All right, those are all the questions. Uh, anybody in the chat have any anything you want to ask? Here Now's your time, we, Spikes. We wrap it up. I'm I'm calling you out specifically, Spikes. What you got a question for us? <laughs> I'm not seeing any. Oh, oh, there's some typing. He says nope. All right. All right. All right. Uh, all right, Kyle, we're gearing up. We're getting crazy close to the season. Uh, we, we should have before too long, before too long, Kyle, uh, start doing some camp episodes and I'm pretty yeah, excited be, about that. Be sure. We should, we should have some season yeah, sure. preview episodes coming up soon. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Be sure, be sure to hit us up on the discord, discord that dot the sloopcast.com. Um, all, all of your, uh, sloopcast news, um, a lot, lot of great channels, the discussions that we have going on in here. It's a, it's a big fam. It's a big family that Jared and I put together here, and it's um, really, really happy with all those that have joined so far. Yeah, and I'm gonna go ahead and <laughs> Kyle is a better dad. Listen, I I don't even know what to do with that. I'm gonna go ahead and drop this. Uh, if you're watching, that phone number. That's our that's our voicemail box. That's our Google voice number, 937-756. I think that spells out sloop somehow. I, I, I forget, but I think it honestly spells out sloop somehow. I forget, though. Um, <laughs> but it's 937-756-6785. You can leave us a voicemail or send us a text message. Once again, 937-756-6785. Uh, and you can hear your potentially your voice or maybe just get your question in uh, on our next Ask Sloopcast. And uh, Sloop, Kyle, do you have anything? Sloop, in Sloop 85. Is that what it is? Sloop 85? S-L-O-O-P 85. See, that's pretty tight. That's our phone number, Sloop 85. Uh, is that anything is it, from... Is it Sloop 85 or is there any numbers in front of that? It's 937 Sloop 85. Okay, 937 Sloop 85. 937 Sloop 85. So, uh, is 85 for 85 through the heart of the South? Uh, 85 sure. is sure. probably sure, because sure. that's what was available. <laughs> 
<laughs> like I was probably just real satisfied to get uh, yeah, well, to get sloop. Yeah. So you um, know what? For now on, it is. It's exactly why. Yes. That's that's exactly why. Uh, anything for me? Um, no, the the um, um, the battle for Ohio is just about to. Um, it's still going on as we're recording here, so I don't have any official news <laughs> for happened, that one. It happened like three days ago for most of the people listening, Kyle. Yes, I know. But other than that, no, nothing. Nothing else here. Another another week down and another week closer to fall camp. Yeah. Uh, and just so everyone knows, uh, once again, 9 through 7, Sloop 85. I will not be posting that anywhere. I don't want to just like make it available just like in text form anywhere. So don't like don't I'm not going to post that on on YouTube in a in a text way i'm obviously saying it on youtube right now or like in the show description or anything like that because i don't want it to get like spammed so don't don't check the show notes for it uh don't don't check any of that for it you just you're gonna have to remember 937 sloop 85 ah so uh that's it for kyle's corner question mark uh looks like the crew is going to have a penalty kick yay (laughs) Go. Happened three days ago. Yes, I know. But no, no, we're good. We're good. All right. Tonight's ending music, uh, once again, will be uh, a Cincinnati-based band called Mother Folk. Uh, They uh, just released some new music, so uh, we're uh, playing them this week. So with all of that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course, support your local podcasters. Once again, this is Mother Folk.